Okay, so this is part 139, line 18A, 3X. Neutrino split proton nuclear chain reaction, reaction UFO 5G while SETI. There's the alien radio signal. And here's a graph. Uh, this is a U fission cross section in bar Barnes and energy EV. Fission cross section measured in Barnes is a function of the energy of the neutron colliding with the U235 nucleus. So that's the kind of energy you can get from it. Fission probability decreases as neutron energy and speed increase, increases. This explains why most reactors fueled with U235 need a moderator to sustain a chain reaction and why moving, removing a moderator could shut down a reactor. Excuse me. Now I've got the hiccups. Hmm. So this is a Nuclear Regulatory Commission. This is an image of a pressurized water reactor vessel heads. Quote, this design gives can-do reactions reactors a positive void coefficient. There's that word again. Although the slower neutron kinetics of heavy water moderated systems compensates for this, leading to comparable safety with PWRs. Quote, to bring a neutron from the fission energy of that and that, it takes an expected N of 16 and 29 collisions of H2O and DTO respectively. And I think we covered this before. And here's the different types of things there. February 9th, my thoughts. Neutron fission of Uranium-238 fast reactor produces fast neutrons and neutrinos to sustain a chain reaction. Add this to a liquid gas formula to achieve a 5G speed. Quote, Uranium-238 is the most common isotope of uranium found in nature. It is not fissile, but it is fertile material. It can capture a slow neutron and after two beta decays becomes fissile plutonium-239. 238U is fissionable by fast neutrons, but cannot support a chain reaction because inelastic scattering reduces neutron energy below the range where fast fission is probable. My thoughts continued. We have to look at the data about elastic and see if we can add it here to stop the inelastic scattering that reduces neutron energy. Quote, fast fission is fission. That occurs when a heavy atom absorbs a high energy neut neutron called a fast neutron and splits. Most fissionable materials need thermal neutrons which move slower. Another quote was fast neutron reactors use fast fission to produce energy. Unlike most nuclear reactors, in a conventional reactor, a moderator is needed to slow down the neutrons so that they are more likely to fission atoms. Another quote is in each cycle two neutrinos are emitted and we did that one already. And this is some sort of reaction showing a graph showing reactions. Proton proton chain is thought to be the dominant source of energy generation in the sun. The initial proton proton reaction, one which produces neutrinos undetectable with 37 CI, establishes the basic rate for all subsequent reactions. Detectable neutrinos are released by the PEP reaction too, so named because the reactants are proton, electron, and proton deutrons. Two, I don't know what that means, two on each. Produced in these two reactions fuse with protons to form a light isotope of helium, which is 3, 2, EG. At this point, the proton-proton chain breaks into three branches. A few barely did detectable neutrinos are produced in the second branch by reaction 6. The most energetic neutrinos are released 10 in the rare branch involving baron, boron 8. Moreover, the neutrinos from the decay of 8b can do something that none of the other solar neutrinos can. They are so energetic they produce the 37r nucleus that is an excited state. This means that the nucleus has more internal energy than it would have in the ground or normal state. The significance of this is that the favorable nuclear transitions can be caused by 8B neutrinos and that are not possible with the lower energy neutrinos. 
The most important excited state of A of 37AR is quite similar to the ground state of 37CI. It is a nuclear analog of the ground state of 37CI. The consideration of excited states led to an accurate determination of the probability that 37CI will capture an 8B neutrino. They were talking about neutrinos. They were having difficulty capturing neutrinos and this guy uh, came up with something to show you how to do it. So my thoughts, February 17, 2012. Based on this data, I've come up with another formula idea. You want to take neutrinos plus boron 8 plus proton-proton chain reaction plus nuclear energy plus A37AR nucleus plus excited state. Okay, so about a year later, the isotope 37CA was observed and its decay rate was found to be within 25% of the value predicted. More important, subsequent measurements by Arthur M. Poscancer and his associates at Brookhaven determined the fraction of decays of 37CA that leads to various excited states of 37K. These were precisely the results needed to calculate the neutrino capture rate of 37CI with an accuracy of better than 10%. And here's a graph here. Spectrum of solar neutrino energies. I can't read the print. <laughs> Sorry. It says neutrino energy, million electron volts. Now remember electron volts came up earlier and neutrino energy. We're trying to find out how we can convert neutrinos into energy, okay? So the energy is plotted with curves showing the sensitivity of the 37 CI detection system now in use, solid line and color, and the sensitivity of a proposed detection system employing lithium. Um, I was excited to see that because lithium is mentioned in the very first diagram of the UFO. It says they use lithium alloys for the outside of their ship. Neither system is sensitive in the region below about 0.8 MeV where the energies of most of the solar neutrinos would be found. The lithium system, however, would be more sensitive than the 37CI system to neutrinos produced by the PEP reaction of 1H plus E, um, that thing there. Most of the neutrinos expected to be captured by 37CI are those released by the decay of 8B. Neutrinos from the proton-proton chain are indicated by solid black lines. Neutrinos from the CNO cycle by broken lines. The neutrino fluxes are plotted as the number per square centimeter per second per MeV for continuum sources and the number per square centimeter per second for line sources. It is convenient to introduce a special unit to express the neutrino capture rate in solar neutrino experiments. The unit is the solar neutrino unit or SNU which we pronounce SNU. When SNU equals 10 minus 36 capture per second per target atom. The reason I pulled all this data is because we needed to know what types of speed are coming from the neutrinos and what can we do with that speed and implement it in with the argon gas to get the 5G force. This implies that an atom of 37 CI would have to wait 10, 3, 6 seconds or roughly 10 billion billion times the age of the observable universe before capturing a neutrino. That's a long time. Of course, in this 100,000 gallon tank, which contains about 2 times 10 to the power of 30 atoms of 37 CI, the average waiting time for a single capture when the rate of capture equals 1 SNU is only 5 times 10 to the power of 5 seconds, or about 6 days per capture. So it takes 6 days for it to capture that neutrino. So February 17, 2012, my thoughts. The key words regarding neutrinos. Okay, the consideration of excited states led to an accurate determination of the probability that 37CI will capture an 8B neutrino, plus a positive electron and a neutron. Uh, these are all key words that I found in this. Arthur M. Posnecker and his associates at Brookhaven the fraction of decays of 37CA that lead to various excited states of 37K. These were precisely the results needed to calculate the neutrino capture rate of 37CI with an accuracy of better than 10%. The model predicted that this calculation should decay within 130 milliseconds on the average into an excited potassium nucleus 
is 3719K, plus a positive electron and a neutron. In a nuclear sense, this is exactly analogous, analogous to the capture of a neutrino by these two, producing plus an electron. And the sensitivity of a proposed detection system employing lithium, 7Li, my thoughts continued. I was surprised to see the word lithium. That's come up in the actual alien messages of an alloy that use, they use for UFOs. More keywords. The lithium system, however, would be more sensitive than the 3,7-CI system to neutrinos produced by the PEP reaction of that. Okay. So most of the neutrinos expected to be captured by 37CI are those released by the decay of 8B. It is convenient to introduce a special unit to express the neutrino capture rate in solar neutrino experiments. Again, we review uh, SNU, so I said my thoughts. According to these test results, they're saying it takes them roughly six days to capture the neutrinos in a 100,000 gallon tank. I wonder, is there a process that can speed up the capture time? Let's Google and see. This is what comes up. There are three different kinds of neutrinos, electron, mu, and ta. I didn't know that. Now I do. The ones that are created in nuclear fusion are the electron version. Quantum mechanics is filled with cases of particles doing two seemingly mutually exclusive things at the same time. Quantum mechanics is another keyword that comes up a lot in the well study lines. Experimentally, we have three different kinds of neutrinos one that interacts with an electron, one that interacts with a muon, and one that interacts with a top particle. So you have to try to figure out how you can use those three things to create a fuel. The energy of a neutrino is actually equals, E equals mc squared. Okay, I'm running out of time, just so you know. This means that if none of the neutrinos have a mass, then the energies for all of them are the same and the neutrinos would never change form. I'll read what I can and then I'll be continuing whatever I don't get on this video on to the next one, okay? Mu neutrinos, for example, get created by cosmic rays in the upper atmosphere. Electron neutrinos get created by nuclear reactors. So neutrinos have mass, but since they're traveling insanely close to the speed of light, not a lot of it. To give you an idea, the most massive neutrino has a mass probably about 10 million times smaller than electron. If an electron and a positron or any other pair come into contact with one another, they'll completely annihilate, and in this process, the magic turns into their mass into a huge amount of energy. So we're looking at how to turn it into energy, right? So this is from David Goldberg, 